Hello there and welcome back to another live workshop. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to use have, has and had correctly. So here's the plan for this lesson. We will start by talking about the basics of form. That is how to choose between have, has and had for different subjects. Then we'll talk about the uses of the verb have and then we'll discuss um, how to decide if the verb have should be used as a state or an action verb in a sentence. That is where you can use having the ing form correctly. And then we have four exercises in which we'll practice choosing between have and has and then choosing between have, has and had for the past tense. And then we'll practice using having correctly. And finally, we'll discuss how to make negatives and questions with the verb have. Now before we start the lesson, I just wanted to point out you can download the full lesson notes with all of the exercises and all of the examples using the link in the description of this video. Alright, so let's start with the basics of where to use have, has and had. Now what you see on the screen is the full chart with all the rules you need to know for this verb. Now this chart is also available in the file that you can download um, from the link in the description. So you can see here that we have three sections. The first section deals with affirmative sentences. Affirmative just means positive. So affirmative sentences are positive statements. The second section is about negative sentences and the last section deals with questions. We'll go over all of these rules but for now uh, to understand the basics, we're just going to focus on the first section, affirmative sentences. Remember that affirmative just means positive statements. So what we see here is if the subject of a sentence is I, you, we, they, or any plural noun, then we use have as the verb. If the subject is he, she, it, or any singular noun, then we use has. Now this is in the present. If we're talking only about the past, it's very easy. As you can see here, we use had for all subjects. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, the pronoun I is not plural. And the pronoun you could be singular or plural depending on the situation. So why are we mixing these pronouns with plurals? Well, we're not. The rule is simply that if the subject is I, or if the subject is you, or if the subject is we, they, or any plural, then for all of these subjects, we just use have. Okay, if the subject is he, she, it, or any singular, we use has. We're not saying that I is plural. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, if the sentence is in the past tense, of course, we just use had. So with this knowledge, let's talk about the various uses of the verb have. You see six uses listed on the screen. These are the most common and the most important uses of have. The first use is ownership. For example, we have a car. That means we own a car. So the verb have means own here. The second use is relationship. Bruce has a wife and two kids. Obviously, it doesn't mean that he owns them. Uh, here, the verb has just shows a relationship between Bruce and his family. Now, note that we're using has because the subject of the sentence is Bruce and Bruce is a singular noun. Now, if the subject were I, we would say I have a wife and two kids. But here, Bruce is singular, so we're saying has. Now, use number three is to express features. What is a feature? A feature is a characteristic or a quality of a person or thing. For example, Anu has a fantastic singing voice. The voice is a quality or characteristic of Anu. We say Anu has because again Anu is a singular noun like Bruce. The next use is to talk about illness, that is being sick. I have a really bad headache today. That means I am suffering from a headache today. Use number five is to talk about experiences. For example, I hope you have a great time at the party. 
That means I hope you enjoy yourself. I hope your experience is good. I hope your experience is fun. So the verb have is expressing uh, experience in this sentence. <clears throat> now here the verb have is experience, um, expressing positive experience, but we can also talk about negative experiences uh, with the verb. In phrases like to have trouble, to have difficulty, to have problems, etc. And we will look at uh, some examples of that later on in this lesson. And finally, the last use Use number six is to talk about eating or drinking. My colleagues usually have lunch at 1 p.m. Now, we can also say, my colleagues usually eat lunch at 1 p.m. And the meaning would be the same. The verb have just means eat in the sentence. Uh, I just want to point out that we're saying have, not has, because my colleagues is a plural subject. If it was one colleague, we would say has but more than one colleague. Colleagues is a plural, so we're using have as the verb. So as you can see here, there are lots of different uses, different meanings for the verb have, aren't there? And actually, if you go to your dictionary, you might find that there are even more meanings, even more uses for this verb, but these six are the most important. Now, there is an important point here that you need to know about, and that has to do with state and action meanings of the verb. Now these four here, the first four uses are actually states. That means they express some general situation. When I say uh, we have a car in this first use, there's no action being performed here. It just expresses a state of ownership. Similarly, Bruce has a wife and two kids. Again, there's no action here. This sentence just expresses a state of relationship. And it's the same with number three and four as well. They're general situations. They're not actions. So for this reason, it is always wrong to use uh, ing or continuous forms in these uses. If you say, we're having a car. Bruce is having a wife and two kids. Anu is having a fantastic singing voice. I'm having a really bad headache today. All of those are wrong. In fact, it's a very common mistake. This is something that I hear a lot of my students uh, say. Uh, and this is something that you should avoid. If you're using the verb have as a state verb, don't use an ing form with it. However, in uses five and six, to talk about experiences or to talk about eating or drinking, you can use continuous forms. You can say, I'm having a great time at this party. That doesn't express a general situation. It, exp it expresses something I am experiencing right now. In the same way, we can also say, my colleagues are having lunch now. Because remember, have just means eat in this context, and that expresses an action. And we can talk about it in the form of a continuous action. Um, also, you can talk about the past, that is, you can use past continuous forms with experiences or to talk about eating and drinking. By that I mean you can say, I was having a great time at the party, but then I had to leave. Okay, was having is a past tense use. My colleagues were having lunch when our boss came into the office and told everybody to get back to work. Okay, so my colleagues were having lunch is a past tense use. So the thing you have to remember is that if you're talking about ownership, relationship, a feature or a quality, or an illness, these are all situations and you should not use ING forms with them. If you're talking about experiences, or you're talking about eating or drinking, then it's okay to use having. So with all of this in mind, I think you now have enough knowledge for us to go to the first exercise in our lesson. You see the form chart again. We're going to practice putting have and has in the correct place. I'm going to show you 10 sentences. In each one, I want you to tell me if you would use have or has. So let's go to the exercise. In each sentence, fill in the gap with have or has. I'm going to put right here on the side, uh, I'm going to put the rule here. Remember, I, you, we, they, have, he, she, it, has. All right, here's the first one. 
I n a friend who works at IBM. N means blank, so I n a friend who works at IBM. Would you say have or has? Well, the subject is I, so this should be have. I have a friend who works at IBM. Lucy n a large family. Have or has? Well, Lucy is the name of a girl, so it's like saying she. So she has. Lucy has a large family. Now notice here that both of these sentences talk about relationship. I have a friend means it expresses a relationship between me and another person who's my friend. Lucy has a large family also expresses a relationship with her family. But here we say have because the subject is I, and here we say has because the subject is Lucy. Number three. Feel free to ask if you、mm, any questions. What's the subject? The subject is you. So have. Feel free to ask if you have any questions. The Smiths、mm, pizza for dinner every day. Have or has? The Smiths means the Smith family. This is a plural subject, so it's like saying they. Right, so the Smiths have pizza for dinner every day. Next one, Sushil,、mm, an MS in electrical engineering. Sushil is、uh, a male name. It's like saying he. So Sushil has an MS in electrical engineering. We、mm, a house in California. We have a house in California. Now before we go on to the next one, I just want to point out in number four. Have means eat, right? And then in number five, Sushil has an MS means he owns that degree. He possesses that degree. In number six, we own a house in California is what it means. Whenever you see sentences with have, has, or had, just think about the use that that sentence expresses. Think about the meaning because that will often help you to decide between the、uh, present tense or the base form of the verb. And the ing form of the verb. Okay. All right. Number seven. My cell phone,、mm, a 16 megapixel camera. My cell phone has a 16 megapixel camera. Why has? Because my cell phone is a singular subject. It's like saying it. So it has is correct. And this sentence talks about a quality. So the 16 megapixel camera is a feature of my cell phone. Number eight, we、mm, a flight to Sao Paulo on Saturday morning. We have a flight to Sao Paulo. This sentence actually talks about a planned experience or an event or a trip in the future. Okay, we have a flight to Sao Paulo on Saturday morning. That is a time in the future. Okay, number nine, I always、mm, coffee first thing in the morning. I always drink coffee is what we mean. The subject is I, so I always have coffee. And number ten, Clara,、mm, no time to cook in the morning because she leaves early for work. Clara is a girl's name, so Clara has no time to cook in the morning because she leaves early for work. How many of these ten did you get right? If you're watching this live, let me know in the chat box. If you're watching the replay, let me know in the comments section below. Okay, now we're going to do our second exercise. In this exercise, you have to choose between have and has, and also had. So we're going to add had to the mix here. So this means some sentences will be in the past tense, and if a sentence is in the past tense, you use had. If a sentence is in the present, then you use have or has, depending on the subject. All right, let's、uh, go to the exercise. Let me add here that if a sentence is in the past tense, you should use had. I forgot to put had over here in the、um, in in the rubric in the heading. Just remember that if a sentence is in the past, you have to use had. I、mm, cereal and orange juice for breakfast today. Have, has, or had? What would you use? Actually, the correct answer is had here, because by today we mean this morning. Okay, I had cereal and orange juice in the past. 
It was the recent past, but it was still in the past, so had. Number two, rather mm, beautiful eyes, doesn't she? What would you put here? Have, has, or had? Well, the question tag here says, doesn't she? So we are talking about the present. So Radha has beautiful blue eyes. Again, if you think about it, we don't normally say Radha had beautiful blue eyes in the past and now she doesn't have them anymore. That doesn't make sense. So has is correct. Number three, have you ever thought about getting into acting? You, mm, a great talent for it. What do you think? You have a great talent for it because we're giving that person a compliment. Okay, and we don't give past compliments to people, we give present compliments. We're saying that, that we're saying a good thing, we're praising that person's talent. Number four, we mm, a lot of difficulty finding John's house on the day of the party. So on the day of the party tells you that this sentence talks about a past. That's a past expression. So we had a lot of difficulty. Number five, I'm taking the kids to the amusement park tomorrow. They always mm, a lot of fun there. They always. So it talks about a general thing. They always have a lot of fun there. Number six, Ross mm, a lot of money, but he lost it all on the stock market. So the money was there, but he lost it all. So now it's gone. So we're talking about the past. Ross had a lot of money, but he lost it all on the stock market. Number seven, what many guests like about this hotel is that it mm, its own gym and swimming pool. So guests still like this fact about the hotel. So if they still like it, we need a present tense verb. So what many guests like about this hotel is that it has its own gym and swimming pool. Number eight, we mm, a small accident on the way here. So as we were coming here, an accident happened to us. So we had a small accident on the way uh, on the way here. Number nine. Okay, this is a little tricky. I wish I mm, my glasses right now. I often mm, trouble reading with that one. So there are two blanks. In the first blank, what we actually have is uh, a construction with the verb wish. I wish I... What do you think? I wish I have? Now here, it should actually be had. Because the rule is that if you use the verb wish, the next clause always uses a past tense verb. That's just how the verb wish is. So here we know we need a past tense verb. What about here? I often have, has, or had. Well, here's the answer. I often have trouble reading without them because the, the adverb often shows you that we're talking about something that happens on a regular basis. So we need a present tense verb. I wish I had my glasses right now. I often have trouble reading without them. All right, number 10. I heard Mr. Gupta mm, a heart attack last week. I heard Mr. Gupta had a heart attack last week because we're talking about the past. Okay, how many did you get right? Let me know in the chat box. I'd like to see, I'd like to um, keep a tab on your progress as we go along in this lesson. Okay, now we move on to exercise number three. This one is a little different. In this exercise, we're going to practice using having correctly. <clears throat> Excuse me, remember that I told you that when, when have is used as a state verb, that is when it expresses a situation like ownership, relationship, a quality, characteristic, or an illness, in those situations you cannot use the ing form having. Well, that's what we're going to practice here. In this exercise, we're going to look at 10 sentences. Now, these are all sentences that we've seen already in this lesson, but I've made some slight changes to them. And some of these sentences will be correct and some will be wrong. Each sentence will contain the verb having and I want you to decide if that use is okay or if it's not okay. Alright, here's the first one. 
Lucy is having a large family. Okay or not okay? Well, this is not okay. Why? Can you tell me why this is not okay? Well, it's because have expresses a relationship here. So we're not talking about Lucy doing any continuous action. Lucy is having a large family. Is she doing any action? No, it just expresses a situation. So Lucy has a large family. Okay, number two. I wish I had my glasses. We saw that previously. I'm having trouble reading this small print. In this book in front of me that I have in my hands right now at this moment. So is this correct or is it wrong? Well, this talks about experience. It talks about a negative experience uh, by saying have trouble. And in this sentence, the verb appears to express something happening at this instant. So this is correct because we're not expressing a general situation. We're, we're talking about something that's happening right now. So it's okay. Next one, my cell phone is having a 16 megapixel camera. Yay or nay? Well, this sentence uh, expresses a feature of the camera, okay? And that is something that's general. It's a state use, so you cannot use having. My cell phone has a 16 megapixel camera. Number four, you're having lunch with your friends tomorrow, aren't you? Correct or not? Well, here, having talks about eating, right? It, it, that's what we mean here. You're eating lunch with your friends tomorrow. So we're expressing a future plan. For expressing future plans, it's okay to use continuous forms of verbs. And here, because we're talking about eating, this is correct. You're having lunch with your friends tomorrow. You're eating lunch with your friends tomorrow. Same meaning. Number five, Radha is having beautiful blue eyes. Yes or no? No. Radha has beautiful blue eyes is correct because that is a characteristic, a feature of her body. Number six. Clara was having breakfast when the doorbell rang. This should be easy for you. This is correct because we mean Ra uh, Clara was eating breakfast when the doorbell rang. And here you see having used in a past sense. Clara was having breakfast. That's also okay. All right, number seven. I think I'm having a fever. Are you having a thermometer? Okay, two havings here. Are they both correct? Are they both wrong? Is one correct and the other wrong? Actually, they are both wrong. I think I have a fever. Do you have a thermometer? And that is because I think I have a fever expresses an illness which is a state or a situation. Do you have a thermometer means do you own a thermometer? Do you have a thermometer available with you? Okay, that is also uh, something that expresses state or situation. So in both of these, you cannot use uh, ing forms. Number eight, Ross is a rich man. He is having a lot of money. Right or wrong? Wrong. He has a lot of money. Again, because this talks about ownership. I'm at the amusement park with the kids and they're having a great time here. Yay or nay? Yay, this is correct. Because I'm at the amusement park with the kids right now and they are experiencing something good, something positive. They're having a good experience. That, that's what we mean by they're having a great time. Have a great time means to have a good experience. So this is okay. Last one. We're having a house in California. Wrong. We have a house in California is correct because the sentence expresses ownership. Okay, this exercise I'm sure was a little tricky. But um, if this was a little difficult for you, I suggest that you w watch that portion again in the replay. I suggest you go through this exercise again because this, um, this error, putting having in state verb uses of the verb have, 
is very, very common. It's a very common mistake and it's something that you should learn to avoid. Okay, good job getting through this exercise. Uh, and now finally, we're going to talk about how to make negatives and questions using have, has, and had. Thankfully, if you've got the idea of using these correctly in affirmative sentences, which is what we've been discussing so far in this lesson, if you understand this first portion, then making negatives and questions is very easy. It just deals with changing the form of the verb slightly. So we have the form chart here. We're first going to do uh, negative sentences, and then we'll come back and do questions. So we see here that in the present tense, to make negatives, we use don't have. If the subject is I, you, we, they, or any plural. If the subject is he, she, or it, or any singular noun, then we use doesn't have. All right, we're going to go to this document I have over here. It's actually a Google Sheets document. It's kind of like Excel. Uh, I have 10 sentences here. Actually, I have uh, 11 sentences. And we're going to go through these and make negatives out of these sentences. Up here on the top, I have the uh, rules for making negatives. I, you, we, they, plural, don't have. He, she, it's singular, doesn't have. Past tense, for all subjects, you just say, didn't have. Now, I wanted to point out very quickly that we're saying doesn't have uh, for he, she, it, and singular. Notice that for both I, you, we, they, and for he, she, it, the verb we're using is the base form. We're just saying have. However, for he, she, it, or singular nouns, we're adding S to the verb does, and we're saying uh, to the verb do, and we're saying does, doesn't have. So that S, that third person singular S, is still being used. Okay, first sentence, Lucy has a large family. How do you make that a negative? Lucy is like saying she. Lucy is a singular noun. So Lucy doesn't have a large family. The Smiths have pizza for dinner every day. Negative. The Smiths don't have pizza for dinner every day. Why don't have? Because the Smiths are a plural subject. So Shil has an MS in electrical engineering. No, I think you're wrong. So Shil doesn't. Sorry about that. Sushil, I want to do that in dramatic fashion, but that didn't work, obviously. Sushil doesn't have pizza for dinner every day. Sushil doesn't have an MS in electrical engineering. We have a house in California. We don't have a house in California. That's the negative. My cell phone has a 16 megapixel camera. Negative. My cell phone doesn't have a 16 megapixel camera. It only has an 8 megapixel camera. I always have coffee in the morning. I never have coffee in the morning. Of course, you could say, I don't always have coffee in the morning. That is also, sorry about that, that is also correct. However, I have, I, I've said I never have coffee in the morning because never is the opposite of always. Okay, so that, uh, that sentence is a lot closer in meaning. I never have coffee to the first sentence. So that's why I've said never, but if you want to say don't, perfectly okay. I had cereal and orange juice for breakfast today. Past tense. So what should we say? Very easy. Didn't have for all subjects. I... I didn't have cereal and orange juice for breakfast today. Radha has beautiful blue eyes, doesn't she? Well, Radha doesn't have beautiful blue eyes, does she? I'm laughing because this is not a nice thing to say to anybody. You should never say this. But for illustration purposes, this is how we would make the negative sentence. But it's a very mean thing to say, so don't say that to anybody. We had a lot of difficulty 
finding John's house on the day of the party. We didn't have a lot of difficulty, or you could actually also say we didn't have any difficulty finding John's house on the day of the party. That's also correct. Number 10, this hotel has its own gym and swimming pool. Negative, this hotel doesn't have its own gym and swimming pool. Mr. Gupta had a heart attack last week. Mr. Gupta didn't have a heart attack last week. That is the negative. So as you can see, negative forms of have, has, and had are very easy. Don't have, doesn't have in the present tense, and didn't have in the past. So now let's go back to our form chart. And I'm up here again. Uh, now we're going to move on to question forms. With question forms, once again to make negatives, we use the verb do. But now you see that the verb do is right here at the beginning. So we start with do, and then we put the subject of the sentence. The subject is just I, you, we, they, or plural, or he, she, it. So if the subject is I, you, we, or they, we put do first, then the subject, and then have, and then the rest of the sentence. The subject is he, she, it. The do becomes does. That's all. In the past tense, we use did. So did plus the subject plus have. All right, with that, let's go back. And I'm back down here. Um, all right. Here we are. Once again, you see the form right up here if you want to refer to it. Lucy has a large family. How do we make that a question? Lucy is a singular subject, so we need to say does. So, does Lucy have a large family? Again, does plus the subject plus have. Does Lucy have a large family? Or you could say, um, if you want to make a negative, doesn't Lucy have a large family? I thought she did. I thought Lucy's family was pretty big. But now you're telling me that Lucy's family is not big. So doesn't Lucy have a large family? That's a negative question. The Smiths have pizza for dinner every day. How do you make a negative? Oh, pardon me. How do you make a question? Do the Smiths have pizza for dinner every day? Every day? Sushil has an MS in electrical engineering. Does Sushil have a master's degree? To me, that seemed like a more natural question, but you could also say, um, does Sushil have an MS in electrical engineering? Or doesn't Sushil have a, I don't know, master's degree? I'm just showing you these negative sentences so you know how to make them, but it's not overly important because these types of negative sentences are not as common in speech as are positive uh, questions. We have a house in California. You make that a negative uh, or a question. I keep saying negative when I mean question. Do you have a house in California? My cell phone has a 16 megapixel camera. Does your cell phone have a camera? Or does your cell phone have a 16 megapixel camera? I always have coffee first thing in the morning. Do you ever have coffee in the morning? That's a more natural question. You can also ask, do you always have coffee in the morning? Don't you always have coffee in the morning? I thought you always had coffee in the morning, like that. I had cereal and orange juice for breakfast today. Did you have cereal and orange juice for breakfast today? That sounds like something a, uh, a, a policeman might ask you if they're interrogating you. Tell me, did you have cereal and orange juice for breakfast today? Radha has beautiful blue eyes, doesn't she? Now this is already a question. So I'm going to um, make a negative out of this and I'm going to say, 
doesn't rather have beautiful blue eyes? We had a lot of difficulty finding John's house on the day of the party. Did you have any difficulty finding John's house on the day of the party? This hotel has its own gym and swimming pool. Does this hotel have its own gym and swimming pool? Okay, I'm sure that this exercise was pretty easy for you. All you had to do was follow this very, very simple rule. With practice, this becomes very easy and I'm sure that you will be using these correctly. As a final point, with these uh, questions, uh, I just want to point out that if you want to use a question word, now all of these questions that we've seen here, these are all yes or no questions. Does Lucy have a large family? Yes or no. Do the Smiths have pizza for dinner every day? Yes, they do or no, they don't. But if you want to add a question word, you just put that at the beginning of the sentence. For example, what do the Smiths have for dinner every day? Okay, what do the Smiths have for dinner every day? What degree does Sushil have? Or what kind of camera does your cell phone have? Now the question word can be what or it can be It can be who, which, um, it can be um, where. So whatever question word you can think of, you can put that at the beginning of the sentence. Now, if the sentence you're asking is a, if the question you're asking is a subject question, let me uh, show you an example. Um, I think I forgot to do this exercise. Mr. Gupta had a heart attack last week. Did Mr. Gupta had a heart, have a heart attack last week? Now here, if we know that someone had a heart attack, but we're not sure who that person was, we don't use this form. We use a different form for subject questions. We would say, who had a heart attack last week? So the answer would be, Mr. Gupta had a heart attack last week. This type of question is obviously a little different because you have who or what or whatever question word uh, plus the subject plus have, has or had without the helping verb do. This is in subject questions. So subject questions are a little different, but subject questions are not the most common question form. Just remember that for most questions that ask about the object of a sentence, this is the form that we use and this is the important form. Okay, this is what you really need to remember. All right, so that brings us to the end of this live workshop. Remember that you can download all of the lesson notes with uh, this form chart that you see on the screen and uh, all of the examples and all the exercises using the link in the description, you can get all of these as one file. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions, as always, you can let me know in the chat box or in the comment section below. And I will see you in another lesson soon.